I'm Gabe. I'm Sila. Jonathan. And this is Driveway Video Discussions, a show where we talk about movies we watched without having to leave the house. This week we're watching I Heart Huckabees, an exuberant, offbeat comedy in which Dustin Hoffman and Lily Tomlin play detectives hired by kind-hearted local poet and activist Albert Markovsky to investigate the meaning of three coincidences that could hold the key to life. The investigation soon involves other clients, such as passionate, vulnerable fireman Tom Korn, cunning sales exec Brad Stand, and hot spokesmodel with an identity crisis, Don Campbell. The hilarious case is further complicated when the detective's seductive French nemesis, Katerine Vauban, <laughs> lures Albert and Tom into her way of seeing things. Outstanding performances and outrageous comedy make this smart, elegant, poignant film from director David O. Russell, quote, a snort-out-loud master class of controlled chaos, end quote. I have seen this movie probably a billion times. I remember watching it for the very first time a couple years ago, and I think I watched it like three times that week after I first watched it. <laughs> wow. I immediately fell in love with it, so I've seen it plenty of times. I've seen this movie probably about 20 times. It's one of my favorite movies. This is not my first time seeing it. Uh, I have seen it once before, but this is my first time seeing the whole thing. The first time I watched it, I don't know what it was about it, but I just got irritated and turned it off. Uh, something about it just rubbed me the wrong way, I don't know. I have a hard time finding things that I don't like about this movie. I mean, the cast is phenomenal. I love the writing of the movie. I love the way the storyline progresses and the way the characters move the storyline along. And especially Dustin Hoffman and Mark Wahlberg. Those two made a real impression on me. And Mar this is the movie that actually made me really love Mark Wahlberg. Every scene he's in in this movie just makes me crack up every time. Like, when he just turns around and just socks that guy in the face for calling him, his, <laughs> for calling him a shrink. I mean, yeah, there's, there's so much to like about this movie. It's really hard for me to find things I don't like. One of my favorite things about this movie is I think there's a lot of layers. You can watch it over and over and take something new from it every time you watch it. Obviously, the performances were great. I don't have to reiterate that. Uh, Lily Tomlin, in particular, I loved. Uh, mm -hmm. Just something, just something about the way she played it. I just loved her. Yeah. Um, Jude Law's Shania story and the integration <laughs> of that into the thing was fantastic. It was just a great little piece of writing, just to heighten what a douche he was at that point. You know, <laughs> and and to turn him around as a character. Yeah. It was it was a great device. Um, the opening monologue, just so filthy and vulgar, uh, <laughs> is just a great tone setter for the movie, just to kind of say right off the bat, okay, you're either in or you're out. Mm -hmm. um, and then Naomi Watts' transformation was great, too, because you don't see someone like Naomi Watts typically go through a backward regress regressive transformation mm -hmm. in a movie you just don't see someone really beautiful go to just being gross yeah <laughs> uh, and then one thing that one thing that cracked me up it was just the minorest thing but i have to say it is uh mark Wahlberg's daughter looked just like you oh, what? <laughs> which was hilarious to me like i said i mean it's it's hard for me to find things i dislike um I know we talk about how a narrow scope in a movie, it you know makes it better that not everybody can really get into it. But sometimes I think it, at some points in this movie, it almost feels like its scope is a little bit too narrow. Like because I studied existentialism for a long time, so I really understood what was going on in this movie, and I really liked it. But I think at some points, it's a little, it gets a little lost for a lot of people. Um, and another thing that <laughs> it's not really a dislike, it's more of just a tiny little thing that bugs me every time I watch this movie. When Lily Tomlin says that Tommy Korn's having a crisis, she hands Dustin Hoffman the phone upside down. And he grabs <laughs> it and starts talking into it. I don't know why, but every time I see that, it just bugs me. That seemed like a sort of a character thing to me. Yeah. It, re it really did. So I, I 
I wouldn't. But he grabs it and talks into it upside down. Again, that yeah. seemed like oh, a character okay. type of a yeah. thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. It really it seemed really true to his character to do that. I had a hard time figuring out things that I didn't like about it because I loved everything about this movie. Like I thought the acting was all really natural, and they all did a really good job of just. It was just natural emotion and chaos that was going on with it. There weren't a lot of things to dislike about this movie, but the things that I did dislike about it permeated the entire film, which is to say I didn't like a single one of these characters except Lily Tomlin. It was just a cast full of despicable characters. Um, also, and, and this sort of plays in with that, is that existentialism by its very nature is very solipsistic. It's really, so this movie really has its head up its own ass. And 90 minutes in, I'm just I'm just going, oh my god, these people are so self-involved. It's just <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. But that's the nature of existentialism. And I think that that's probably the thing I disliked about it the most, is that I, I just find that really irritating. I think there's, there's a lot to get out of this movie. It's, as someone who has studied existentialism a lot, and, you know, kind of puts a lot of uh, principles from it into my own life. It's it's really refreshing to see a take on existentialism that makes sense. That's you know because existentialism is very chaotic. I mean that's that's the nature of what it's like. And that this movie kind of takes the chaos and puts it in a very tangible order. So there there really is a lot to get out of this movie if you if you pay attention to what's going on and the ideas that are being put forth. There's some things in there that are very relevant. To, to life and to the things around us that could be taken, you know, and put into practice. I think this movie did a really good job in expressing the fact that we're all alike in the sense that we all have our own inner struggles and that we're all searching for the same thing. We're all trying to find some sense of peace and understanding. So. Yeah, everybody's on the same ride together. Yeah. We all see it in different ways and deal with it in different ways, but we're all searching for the same thing. We're all going through the same weird chaos. As I was watching this movie, I realized that everything that I hate about it is something I hate about myself, uh, which is to say that I am very self-involved and I uh, spend way too much time thinking about me and how the universe affects me and what I can get out of it. And so if I took anything away from this movie, it was be less self-involved because it's <laughs> really irritating to anyone watching. <laughs> Because this movie means so much to me, like, and it, there's so many things that I just love about this movie, I have, I have to give it a 9.5. I mean, it, it really means that much to me. It's such a great movie. And, you know, there are things wrong with it, and I know that, but for me, it's definitely a 9.5. Not quite a 10, but it's up there. I have to give it a 10. It's my favorite movie. I'm never going to get sick of it. I'll watch that every day till I die, and I'd be happy. I'm giving this movie a 7, which I know is probably, you're going, what, how could you rate it so low? Um, it's because, although there's very little wrong with this movie, and it's it's extremely well done, uh, the things that I found irritating about it really irritated me, and that, like I said, they permeated the whole thing. So, I just can't rate it that highly. Yeah. I just didn't mm -hmm. like it that much. Just, like I said, can't find any fault with the filmmaker, can't find any mm -hmm. fault with the actors, can't find any fault with the writing, except that it just irritated the hell out of me. And I think that's what this movie comes down to, is what it means to you personally. The compliment to it is this, that even though it irritated the hell out of me, I have to give it a 7, because it it really just is that good. Yeah. So, thank you everybody for watching. Be sure and click on the annotations bar down below to go to our channel where you can like, subscribe, uh, watch our old videos, watch Road to the Movies, watch past or future driveway video discussions. We've got links to the Facebook, Twitter, blog, all down in the description. So go there if you want to find out more about us. And be sure and tune in on October 1st for our next episode of driveway video discussions where we kick off October with the horror film, The Ugly. See you then. Bye.